Greet you all on this blessed day that Yah has granted unto us. We shall speak unto his nation, his emat, the truth of the living Torah. That's the most vital thing that is needed for us as a people. We began to understand and began to emphasize in our lives what Torah commands us. Because there lies the riches of Almighty Yah in Yoshua HaMashiach. I want to continue in the process that I began some, this will be the third installment here on Chitzvei Imat, concerning the blessings as prospering in Yah, the process on Las Chitzvei Imat. I emphasize greatly those things that were impediments, and those things that were roadblocks and stumbling blocks that caused us not to reach to the zenith of Yah's excellence. Whereby the power of his Torah, the revelation of that, is so innate with our physical, mental, spiritual activities uh, that it caused this great glow to shine upon us as a nation of people and sometimes we can get our eyes on things that Yah does not intend for us to have our vision upon it is one thing that we can trust in with absolute trust that he has set a course he has set the way the way that we all must go and if we walk in the path of his sadiq his character, then we will not be disappointed. I will show us tonight why we are disappointed and some of the things that tend to cause us to stumble. But above all things, I want to show us how we can walk in that excellent power of Almighty Yah, whereby his great riches will flow from his nation. I want to somewhat of an interesting article today that I was not looking for. I simply stumbled across it. And so when I read the capture of the article, it was somewhat baffling. It threw me for a loss because I understand the government of this world. And so I began to scurry, to look, to define words in the application of the article. And there was one that I wanted to define according to the linguistic, the language of the English man, if we may call ourselves that, or this land that we're in. And the word prosper, you will have those that are the disciples of darkness, this is how it is defined. But it's not defined that way from the language of our forefathers. This is the true meaning of what being prosperous or to prosper in this land. It says to succeed in an enterprise, some kind of formation, a business, to to procure unto oneself the wealth of finance, that one is able to overcome those obstacles that one may reach that pinnacle of success. It is to succeed in enterprise or activities. And you will hear this phrase often, oh, they are doing well, or to do well. That's what it implies. And as we can see the maturation of this word throughout the grammatics of the language of the Latin, the language of Greek, the language of the grammatic old German language, we can see how it has been shaped and formed to apply to this principle. Because in the Latin, it simply implies to hope, to have a desire for. And so we can see how this word has gravitated to, has moved along the course of time to destroy 
the actual uh, 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 meaning of the word in the Hebraic expression of Yah's terminology. Now I'm reading this because I want to read an article. And then I will get into the depths of this teaching tonight. It, is, it also implies to, to, to become strong, to flourish, and to thrive. It means one must have a strength to be recognized. And whatever one does, and it's basically talking about enterprise, that one must thrive in that arena. One must be strong to destroy, to dismantle uh, every kind of opposition. That's not the success of Yah. It is to progressively move along, but to bring uh, all those, whether one is uh, a Israelite, homeborn one, or a gear, a stranger, that they all may uh, share in the great riches of Yah. So when I read this article, my conscience, my mind, was given to a particular verse. I'm going to read that, but I want to read the article. It says, quote, riches, the most wealthiest. Eighty-five people, we're talking about eighty-five. We're not talking about one thousand five, one hundred five. We are talking about eighty-five people. The richest eighty-five people in the earth. They own as much. They own more. They own as much wealth as the poorest 3.5 billion people. 85 people. The concentration of wealth in the hands of 85 people. And half of the earth's population... 85 wicked men and women own more than them. I was astonished at the amount of wealth they have acquired. To bring that graphics down to uh, an understanding whereby you can relate to, the population of those that are the diaspora of the dark hue skin in this nation, it is said to be somewhat between 30 and 40 million people. The wealth. These were the people that labored in this earthen soil in America. They were the ones that procured the wealth of their masters and the vast concentration of these 85 individuals, they're here in America, in Russia, one or two in China, one or two in Mexico, few in Russia. That's where they're, they're concentrated. That people or that extension of those that came during that period known as the Atlantic transatlantic slave trade, the total wealth of that nation of people in this country, the sum of their total wealth is only $1.2 trillion. That's it. 40 million people. 85 men and women, it says, quote, the world's 85 wealthiest people hold as much wealth as the poorest, 3.5 billion, or half the world's population. That's astounding. That's staggering. Half. You think that they're brighter than you or you? You believe that? They're not bright. They own more wealth. So this is what T.D. Jakes would call prosperous, wealthy people. That's roughly 1.7 trillion 
for both the 85 richest people and the poorest half of the planet. You tell me the poorest of the poorest of people in the earth realm that this 85 individuals, they have a mass more wealth. You don't base wealth on a car and things like that. It must be substance, land, and enterprises whereby the economy really never affects. And yet you have 85 disciples of hell whose father has made them rich. That's why we should not inspire. I, I, I'm going to teach, don't worry. To pursue anything that, that's outside of the way. I will show us in Torah. It says that the global economy has become so skewered, so wicked, so twisted, in favor of the riches that the economic growth in many countries today, the growth now, the economic growth. What is the economic growth? It is a GDP. It is the gross production of the nation. It is what the nation produce. It is what we call, quote, the goods. It is something that is tangible. So the GDP, the gross domestic, domestic product uh, in this nation, we have 85 men, uh, 85 men and some of the most horrendous looking, uh, crazy, space alien looking women. The deformity of their features are beyond humankind. It's the truth. I see things like that. It is so in favor that of the rich that the growth in many countries today, quotes, amounts to little more than a winner takes all. Windfall for the riches is astronomical. It is beyond concept. How do you even phantom one trillion dollars? That's a thousand billions. That is the GDP of the vast of the 168 nations in the United Nations. That their wealth, there are only about 13 countries, 20 at the max, that their GDP is greater than one trillion dollars. So to understand the dimension of that sum, it is beyond our comprehension to even have any kind of sense of its worth. Because we don't deal in that realm. The report title, Working for the Few, and that's what the masses are doing, working for the few. I want to show us something. I make statements. And it is one thing about the insidious working of this nation. It has, it has the ability, ability to divide people. So it tells the white man, damn every white man. It tells the white man that those that are the dark hue, they are, they are reaping greater benefits. And they are the ones that are breaking the social system, which is a damn lie. I'm saying that to show us how the spirit of these that have this wealth, how it operates, and I'm going to quantify it and qualify by Torah, okay? So it creates this, this, this uh, dichotomy that one ethnicity balancing the other one. And so when you hear them say, well, we need to raise the minimum wage, then you will have those crying from what they call the right and the left, saying, we don't need to do it, trying to take away the wealth. And these are poor, and I would say it, ignorant whites, men, and women. I'm not going to express it any other way. I'll show you why. Because a poor white man has much in common with the poor man of dark hue. I will read. I will read what wise messenger said all right 
So the report titled Working for the Few warns the democratic institutions are, are being undermined as an increasing amount of wealth is concentrated in the hands of just a few rich individuals, making it ever so easy for them to influence policy, to influence the mind concept, to influence the subliminal, uh, to make one act and react according to their power. Well, I don't buy that, Riyak. Well, I got something for you. And that's why they're influencing just like the Hunts brothers. I recall them as a young ignorance man when the price of gold uh, in the latter 70s went up in the early 80s. And these same Hunts boys tried to corner the market of silver they bought. I found an old gold tooth. I remember that. I went to a place and I got $160. I was amazed to get that. So they tried to corner the market as they have cornered the political arena. Hear me, Yisrael. It is only to enrich themselves further. And the report calls this process political capture. They capture the minds of the people through the political process. Through the rule and the rulership, the authority. That's how they do it. And you must conquer, you must seek to divide. And they purport images of different ethnicities of people to create this animosity and the spirit uh, that they are the ones that are causing it. No, these children of hell are. Well, you can't say that. Well, I know that they are birth. They have an allegiance with darkness. And I want to read, you that are listening, I want you to hear this. It says here in the writing uh, of the Kizvei, the scripture, it tells of an account that Hashatan, he took Yoshua Hamashiach into an exceedingly high mountain. And the arrogance of the rich and the powerful, the arrogant, they looked down upon every man. I don't give a damn what your ethnicity is, you're not their equal. So he takes him up to signify this arrogant, this hubris pride. And he showed unto Yoshua HaMashiach all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. He did not show him one kingdom. He showed him all the kingdoms. These men and these wicked women like the Walmarts uh, and the Offenheimers uh, and people like the Rockefellers... Uh, the enterprise span beyond this nation. It is global. It is, uh, it is extraterrestrial. It is beyond the physical realm. So he showed Yoshua all the kingdoms. He showed him Russia. He showed him America. He showed him the land of Israel. He showed him all the kingdoms in a moment of time. And Hashatan said unto him, All I have always been captivated by this. He said all this power, he uses the word give. The word give in our forefathers language, it is not done. It is the ability to bestow. It is the ability to grant. It is the ability because one has the power, one has the ability to, uh, to give unto one. He said all this will I give you. All oh, the power. I will give you the power of the wealth. I will give you the power of the kingdom. You see, these people have power of the wealth. They have the power of the wealth. He said, all this power will I not find unto you. He says, and the beauty of it, you will be esteemed among the nations. You will be lifted up like a god. That's why I say, damn all gods. You will be esteemed as a mighty superior one. He said, for that, this has always captivated me, for that is delivered unto me. I have power. I have the strength to do it. 
It has been delivered. In order for someone to deliver something unto you, they must have possession and power to grant you a stay or to grant you the rule of the government of that for a while, for a season. He said, it's been delivered unto me. And he said, damn it, I want you to know emphatically, he said, and to whomsoever I will, there's not a damn thing you can do. He said, I can give it to them. So you look at the features of these individuals, the men, the nerdy, the, the distance, uh, they have no physical attraction and no intellectual power no greater than yours. He said there is only one stipulation, if you will therefore bow down and worship me, all shall be thine. Just like we must have a personal interaction with Yah. There are those that know the powers of darkness. There are those that go beyond the natural realm into the spiritual terrestrial realm. And they walk inside of those camps. Just like Elijah, those that did not taste death, but they were translated into the kingdom of Yah. These men have the ability to go into that inner circle of darkness. And they are anointed for that. They have uh, the Christ-like anointing. Uh, he said, give it to whomever I want to. I like this capture here, the way he says that. Hallelujah. He says unto Yahshua the same illustration. He took him up into an exceedingly high mountain. He showed him all the kingdoms of the world. And he showed him the delusion of them all. He says unto him, all these things. Now he tells him, all these things will I give you. He said, you must first of all fall down. And then you must worship me. So these 85 wealthy, they're not wealthy. They're not wealth at all. It's not the wealth, the fatness of Yah. So the wealth of Yah must be defined as how we procure it according to Torah. And if it comes any other way, then we know that this is uh, from the spears of darkness. And if we think that this is not legit, it is our own folly, huh? In our own ignorance that blinds us. I want to read something. White men think that these powerful men care about white poor people. They're liars. They think that they care about what we call black people. They're liars. You think they care about Mexicans? You're a liar. Can I read this? It's from the voice of a profound teacher with great utterance. His name is Shirach. He gives us a comparison. He says this. He tells us to, uh, to love Yah all of our lives. To love him all of your life. There's a result to that. But this is what he says. He says, and call upon him for your Yoshua, for your Yosha, for your salvation and your deliverance. He also says this. He says, every, not some, every creature loves its own. Every creature loves his own kind. And every person, person, his neighbor. You're not the rich man's neighbor. Well, that's not explaining things, Reach. All living things being associated by species... And a man clings to one like himself. A man only clings to one like himself. He only enjoy, enjoins himself to one that is of his equal. He asked the question, if you think my knowledge is wrong, he said, what fellowship has a wolf with a lion? Can a wolf and a lion fellowship? He says, no more has a sinner... With the righteous man. Righteous man of life, a sinner does not want to deal with him. He asks this analogy. He says, uh, what's shalom? What's 
gathering in the market is there between a hyena and a dog. Although they are the same species, they are carnivora, they are meat-eating uh, uh, carnivores. He say, what fellowship do they have? And he says, I want to ask, show you the comparison. He says, and what shalom between a rich man and a poor man? He doesn't give a damn about him. Well, that's not enough. Okay. He say, while asses in the wilderness, they are the prey of the lion. A lion look for a zebra, a wild ass. He said, likewise, likewise, the rich man, he eats up the poor. He doesn't give a damn if your skin is white as white crayon. You don't mean a damn thing to him. He said, the rich man eats up the poor man. And then he says, humility is an abomination to the proud man. To humble himself, man that is full of arrogance, it's a vile stench. It is a to iba. It is so filthy. He shows us the related parable to that. Likewise, equal to that, a poor man is an abomination to the rich man. He stinks. He's vile. That's what it says. Well, that's not enough. It says when a rich man begins to fall, he is steadied by friends. His friends uplift him. But when a man, when a poor man is down, he is Kicked to the dirt. He has no friends. You think the rich man is going to spend his wealth to procure you? He will send the poor boys, whether they're black, whether they're white, and these ignorant jackasses, nicompoons, think that their skin color is superior, and the rich man doesn't give a damn thing. And that fellow will die with you in the ditches and the rich man's son will not die with you. He says when a rich man falls, uh, his helpers are many. He speaks unseemly words. He talks to them like dogs. You recall some years ago, the woman's name was Miss Hemsley. She and her husband owned 126 of the high-rise buildings uh, in New York City. She was a Jezebel. She was a dog. She treated the people just, it was so inhumane, it was not even, the woman had no human sensitivity. In this hole, she was wealthy, one of the wealthiest women in the world. So greedy that she stole $50,000. It's one thing about rich, powerful men. They don't want you to get no upper hand when you're playing the stock market. And she got insider's trading knowledge. And she sold her shares. And the cow went to prison too. Sure she did. Rich man don't allow you to mess with his money. A rich man. That's why the jails are filled with poor men. And they're laboring and they're working. He said, and they justify him. A rich man, they justify. Well, see, where it's the black folks taking the money. They own the welfare. And these bastards. I said to Oxymion, I said, you know, I gave him the agro, agro review of South Carolina. There was a time that you could go in there and find anything. We first came in. There's nothing there now. Because there are no small time farmers. The agro bus had bought them all out. And say, I want you to grow nothing but peppers. That's it. That's all they grow, peppers. Peppers. You must use this and that. That's it. I want you to grow nothing. No, no. no. Nothing but cucumbers. And that's it. That's it. And they bought them. Just like all the funeral homes in America. They're owned by corporations. So they love to see people die. So doctors invest and they invest. 
I don't want to get too far off the teaching tonight. It says, if a poor man slips, they even reproach him. They say, you dirty bastard. That's how they speak to a poor man. And that's how they speak to the poor today. Eighty-five people own more wealth than 3.5 billion. That is not of you. I taught a message yesterday. It took me three hours plus. Concerning the strangers of the land, the gear. Yah says that sojourn or go live, cohabitate, to intrigue them like one of you, Yisra'ya. He speaks wisely. That's what a poor man does. And he receives no attention. What a rich man speaks, all are silent. If there was a rich man that walked in the midst and said, I want to talk to you all. I am J.B. Hunt. Everybody will get quiet. They will be amazed at this freak of a dog, son of hell, child that worshiped the powers of darkness. You don't get that kind of wealth. Bill Gates has not procured that by not bowing before the powers of hell. And so they come up with all these little Illuminati groups and all that, these ignorant individuals, are, and they want to talk about that. But the depth of that is greater than that. You will not even understand the formality and the punctual, punctual process of that unless you're part of it. Even those men cannot explain. Now, there were things that have been seen in the Hashemans of Yah that the man of man there no words to express. Uh, and these jackass ignorant men uh, go to the internet uh, and bother the lot. Who do you think run the internet? The stupid. Oh, the Luminari, the main front, and all of that. Bill Gates is the 33rd degree Mason. Uh, they're so stupid. I don't even listen, believe me. If I'm going to waste my time, I won't waste it with silliness like that. I don't waste my time trying to learn things. I don't. I spend my time trying to understand the power of truth. That's the only thing that makes us free. When a rich man speak all are silent and they extol him to the clouds, uh, whatever he says. Rich people gather and they talk and, they, and they, everybody knows they're lying. They, <laughs> yeah, I see you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Walmart. And they extol everything he says. But when a poor man speaks, they say, who is this dog? You think we that are poor, you think him or him or you or you think you're going in front of the Waltons, they're going to listen to you speak. Hell, they don't listen to all the employees they have. You think your color of skin is going to give him preference? How much money you got? You're poor just like the all of them. And you're just as much as trash as them. That's the arrogance of them. That's how Shatan trains his children. And they enter into a spiritual, it is spirit, a ram that is, it can't even, they can't even destroy it. When they go into that, that delusional environment, uh, that place to be in power, they can't even tell you what happened. That's why I know these liars on the internet do not know. It's beyond that. There were prophets seeing things so beautiful, so wonderful that they couldn't even express it. That's why the magnificent of the beauty of the kingdom of God, it cannot be expressed in, the, in terminology that we will understand. We got to see that. We got to enter into that. Our language cannot express it. It's beyond the magnitude of the tongue to express that. And so it is in the powers of darkness. These, these liars that write these articles and say, well, the Illuminati are going to have their meeting and they're going to do that. These are silly little Do you think they care about that? They don't. And there are silly men out there that think they're smart. This is beyond some natural concept. It's greater than that. Let me move quickly. It says riches, Yah says riches are excellent if they are free from sin. These men, they have held back the wages of the poor for their own hurt. 
they have robbed. They have caused a man to be away from his wife and his children for six months, mining for gold and nickel, and they abuse them. And they rob them and they steal and they take. He said poverty is evil. See, when we are poor, it is evil in the opinion, the judgment of the wicked. Because we don't have, we think that, well, we don't have and so we, it's bad for us and I don't have this. No, in the face of the wicked, in the face of those that are wicked, it's evil. In the face of those that are wicked without Yah's truth, they will say that they, those people are miserable. They have nothing. Yah didn't say it was that. He says here, a, a man's heart is love. When a man has the genuine heart of Yah, he said it changes his countenance. That's why I warn us all the time, when your heart is right, it will change your countenance. Whether it is tough or evil, if your heart is right, it will change your countenance. If your heart is evil, there's nothing like an evil look. I've watched those look at me. You can just see the evilness in their eyes when they look. And I say, this is a sad shame. It will change their countenance, whether it is evil or tough. And a merry heart makes a cheerful countenance. When one has the joy... Of this knowledge, it makes their countenance fat. Not only that the mark, the oath, the strength, the beauty of a happy laugh, a happy heart is a cheerful face, a face that makes you happy. A face that calls you to rejoice. You know that that man or that woman, when one has the issue of the riches of Torah, it the heart is made rich and fat. I'm not talking about a silly grinning face. There's a difference between a silly grinning face and a face that is assured with the riches of wisdom and the riches of the knowledge of the, yeah, the riches of the signs of wisdom. There. That's what I'm talking about. Not because you laugh and you're silly and you smile all the time. That doesn't mean that you got a happy heart. But to devise proverbs, see, what a man has a happy heart, he has a cheerful face. Why? Because he has the ability to speak the Marshall Proverbs, wise saying, things that are wise. When he talk, even the birds listen. When that man talked, just like Noah, even the, the, the beasts came into the covenant of Yah. It requires painful, painful thinking. You got to lay things out. You got to measure on things. And the finding out of parables is a wearisome labor to the man. You will know what a man has labored. And so when he can revive himself, when he can eat, and when he can refresh himself, and when he eats the wonderful dainties of Yah, then his countenance is made fat because he has labored to know the wisdom of that matter. It saddens me when we don't have that among the nation today. Men that labor and, and, and they get weary to understand the beauty of simple things. These young boys don't understand anything of the spiritual realm. When they go to the internet and is ran by the powers of darkness, they find articles talking about the Illuminati, the Club of Rome, the Bill Burgers. And they give you a false delusional uh, uh, expo of that uh, based on the opinion of man. And th th there are things that are beyond the scope of man's ability to comprehend. You must have the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach. That's why when the demon of Gadara, when he came out of Yahshua, he knew that demonic power, knew that it wasn't time. We knew that we had a space of time. Uh, you cannot usurp that authority because there is a contractual bonding point between the Abah that created us that we shall have a season. We need men to understand that there are things that the natural mind cannot comprehend those things. And we're all silly natural minded men. We think silly and we act silly. And that's just a fact. We don't know the dynamics of the depths uh, of this Torah. That's why we need men to live in this book that they get weary. And when they up, when you see them, ah, my friend, 
There was one word that escaped me all night. I've been praying for days, but yet you have brought truth to it. I prove all things by this book. I don't need no external type of, uh, of uh, articles to prove this. The book proves all things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How do we begin this process? Even as Yaka Han said, Beloved, I would above all things that you may so to prosper. And not only that, but to be in excellent health. Your health, your health is excellent. And be in the beauty of health. Even as your being, the, your mind, your body, your thoughts have labored. They have labored in the Torah. And that's a great wisdom in your mind. I want to show us that we began this process. The writing of David. Hear it. In the book of Tehillim, it says this. It says here, Yah uses the word he says he wants us to daman, rest. I know we all think we understand what the word rest, R-E-S-T, means. He says, I want you to do, daman. I want you to be still. I want you to be quiet. I want you to be as one that is dumbfounded, one that has no knowledge, one that has no skillfulness. I want you to rest. I want you to grow as one that is dumb. I want you to rest. He says, I want you to do, do man. I want you to rest. He tells us to rest in him. And he tells us to do it with patience, with cool. I want you to have the fear. I want you to have the reverence. I want your mind to be steadfast. I want you to rest in Omaniya with patience. I want that assurance of that uh, patience. That it caused anxiety. That you're fearful. Uh, and, and there are speculations there. That's why we must understand what Yah speaks. You don't understand him according to your own ignorance uh, and your calculation uh, of language. It's deeper than that, Yisrael. That's why Yah commands us when we have elders that labor before us, uh, they're worthy of honor. Damn it, we don't do it. We sit and we do nothing and then we have a messenger labor, an elder, he's laboring to understand uh, he gives himself wholly over unto that. He denies himself of certain sensual pleasures and certain activities. You don't do this by committing folly. He tells us uh, to rest in Yah, our Abba. And he tells us, he says, he uses the words harra. He says, fret not. Don't even fret. Don't become angry. Don't become, uh, uh, don't become so hostile. Don't fret. Because, because of him uh, who prosper in his way. Don't allow that to trouble you. He did not say they prosper in the way of Yah. Now, this says here in Tehillim 37, 7, just listen. He tells us of those that prosper in his way, in their way. All of our ways are right unto us, are they not? Yeah. And there are those that are devious with certain workings of darkness. They will do anything for a dollar. They will do anything uh, to make themselves a name. They'll do anything. And there are those that he said they would, they would prosper in his way. Uh, why? Because of the man uh, who brings, uh, he brings wicked devices uh, to pass. Uh, he uses the term uh, uh, mizima. These are inventions and things uh, that are so vile and so destructive. Uh, they prosper in their own ways. These 87 richest men and women of the world, uh, they have prospered in their own ways. And they have brought wicked devices uh, to pass. Uh, they have brought the, wicked, uh, the wickedness of, uh, of the very mindset of Hashatan. Uh, they use the devices of darkness. Uh, they have captivated the minds of the masses. We are easily drawn and given unto the, their seduction. And we believe their lies before we believe one that, that speaks the truth unto us. So we cannot fret. We don't fret because we see someone and we say, oh, I wish I had that. 
Get upset because they have it. That's not the prospering of your heart. Gotta have my own. You don't have anything. You got to die. You're taking nothing with you. There's nothing going with you. Nothing. And so we don't fret. We don't become unravel. We don't burn in anger. But I don't have enough this mind. You have food and raiment. When we learn that kind of contentment, we will be healed beginning here. And when we begin to be healed here, we will prosper. We will look wealthy and strong and healthy until we get it right here. I don't care what you say. You can put on the Leslie Faye frock, the finest of shoes. It means nothing unless we get it right in the Leba. And it must be in the way of Yah. Well, you're saying that, man. Well, let me read this then. Hallelujah. How do we begin this process? Surely the prophets can tell us, can they not? The Naveen. Well, let's hear what Yeshaya says, the prophet Isaiah. He says to us, this is what Yah says. To clarify his identity, he calls him our, uh, our redeemer. Our kinsman redeemer who has purchased us. He said, this is what Yah says. He is your redeemer. We know that he is the, the uh, Chadosh or the Kodesh, one of Israel. He says that I am Yah, your Abba. He says, I am the one that Lamar. I'm the one that teach you. I'm the one that trained you. I'm the one that bring you up. I'm the one that instruct you. I am the one that, he said, I am the one that teach. I am Yah, your Abba, that teach you uh, to Yael, to profit. He is the one that teaches how to profit. He is. Yah is the one that teach us how to profit, to gain the value of wisdom and Torah, to gain the wealth of our health and honor. He is the one. No one else can teach us how to profit. Isaiah 48 and 17. Nobody can teach us that. He's the one that teaches us how to profit, which lead you by the way. David said, Yah said that the wicked man, he prospered in his own way. Yah is the one that leads us by the way. He is the one that leads us by the way. David says that the rich man, he is one that, uh, that he prosper in his way. He prospers in his way. Isaiah said that Yah leads us by the way to profit. That we can profit in the way of Yah. That's why our minds don't want to take us in the way of Yah. Because it brings the fullness of his Rafa. It restores us unto him. Yisra'ya. That's why her short time said to Yahshua, come in this way. Yahshua, through all of that false declaration, uh, he said unto her short time, man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yah, he said, get behind me, devil of hell. You don't live by some kind of material obsession or possession. You live by the Torah of Yah. Because you're living a life to live his life. You're living his life to live in his kingdom. So he is the one that teaches us how to profit. That's why he brings us into the way. He brings us into what? The way that we should go. And then he says, Oh, Yisrael, oh, that you had listened to my mitzvah. And we just listen to the mitzvah, the works of Yah, the commands of Yah, his commandments, the great works that he has done, that they become so real to us, uh, they're not actually uh, real to us. Oh, that if we will listen to the mitzvah, then we would have had shalom uh, as rivers that flow uh, from the mountain. 
We will have shalom if we just listen to the words of Yah. That's why we don't possess shalom. That's why we don't have the shalom of Yah because we don't listen to Israel, Yah. And our righteousness, our sadiqa, will be like the waves of the sea. Yah. What is more monstrous? Huh? When you all went down to the beach doing uh, after tabernacle, did you all see the roaring of the, uh, of the, uh, of the waves? Ah, they were so loud there. One day, Aksimeon, Raphael, and I, you could hear them. You couldn't sleep because uh, the boisterous sound and the roaring of those waves were massive. And that is how our righteousness is when we're in the way because we will, ya'al, we will succeed. We will have the success of the mandate of Torah. We will have the power of life in our speech. Our actions produce life. Our words that we speak because they're wise, it causes health and wealth to flow into the hearts of Yisrael. Yeah. Not a Cadillac or Mercedes Benz. There are, there are things that are greater than that. The wealth, they have all that and they're not happy. Hallelujah. There was a profound prayer of the prophet Nehemiah. He prayed. He sends the agony that was about to fall upon Yerushalayim, the nation of his people. And he cried unto Yah, this is his prayer, Nehemiah, a portion. He calls him, he says, O Savrat Yah. He says, I beseech you, I beg of you. He says, let now, now this moment, or no. Let now your ears. He said, please let them be attentive. Kashab. Here, be attentive, please, above all things. Just hear, hear my prayer, my tefireth, my cry. Why should I hear you, Nehemiah? He says, be attentive to the prayer of your servant, your evidence. One that is faithful, that's loyal, that's what a servant is. I would like for the Achim to teach a message on true followers, not worshipers, but followers. That's been driving in my heart for, uh, for days. I just don't have time to study the message. But true followers. He said, I am your servant. And he said, not only mine, but to the prayers of your servants, your evident, those that truly serve you. For what reason? He said, because hear this nation. Who desire, the passion is, uh, to yare, to fear your name. Listen now. When one begins to fear the name of Yah, Nehemiah 1 and 11, uh, this is the result. For what? And prosper. I would above all things that thou mayest prosper. We don't fear the name of Yah, we're not going to prosper. This, uh, in the name of Jesus, this is not the prospering of Yah. This is not Yahweh's prospering. This was the prayer of the Nobi of Yisrael. That we may fear your name. Why? Because if we fear your name, uh, there shall be shalach. We shall prosper. We will advance. We will show the experience of our wisdom, our knowledge, and our wealth of Torah delight. We will show that. We will make progress. We will progress toward relationships among the nation, among one another. Hell, we don't do an excellent job with that. It's just a fact. He said, I beseech you, I pray you. Do this for your servant this day. And he says, and grant him compassion in the sight of this man. For I was the king's cupbearer. I bear the cup of his sadiq, his righteousness. That's the cup that we should be the cupbearers of. Our cup should be running over Hallelujah. with the gladness and the riches. Of Almighty Yah. It should be running over. And that's just a fact, Yisrael. And the reason is not because we have looked at the wicked and we perceive uh, that they are making great strides. And they are not. Yah said you should not even fret yourself because of these evildoers. 
Because they are prospering in their way. They are mizima, their evil inventions and deeds. Yeah. Lay upon their beds and think of evil things to do to rob, to steal, to corrupt others. And you fret because of that. Uh, and you get haza, you get uh, all anxious and you get upset. Uh, and there's this uh, great anger uh, that, that boils in you because look what they got. And I don't have nothing. Uh. That's none of y'all. You have food, you have clothing, you have more than the 3.5 billion uh, that I just talked about. As long as we're walking in our own ways, we will never understand the truth of Yah. We need to get in the way of Yah that we may begin to fear Him. We begin to show Him great honor and great, great passion for Him. That's what we must do. That's the reason why, because you know, my friend, everything comes from Yah. Everything. I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is, it comes from Yah. Can I prove that in the writing of Torah? Shirak tells me this. He says, He says, prosperity. Jolach. Prosperity. The power to advance, to grow, to mature. He said, prosperity. And he says, and also adversity, trials, great agony. The sarah, the great trials, the testing of one's mind. Prosperity and adversity. He says, life and death, poverty and wealth, it all comes from Almighty Yahweh. All of it. That's why you should not despise a poor man. No more than you esteem a rich man more than a poor man. That's why you should not despise a man that does not possess the wealth of wisdom, understanding, or daughter of Tizion like one. And you should not esteem one greater than one is because of one that has not what you perceive that that one has not. That's why I've never allowed men to esteem me. Oh, we want to bless, bless Yah for Reag. No, you will never. I've never allowed that. You can appreciate Yorkshire, then you will appreciate Yisrael. You don't love him, you're not going to love me. It's only empty words without any substance at all. There are men looking for self-esteem for themselves. I don't need that. I never have. I don't, and when people began to talk to me that way, I don't want to hear that. So all comes from you. It all. The earth, the fullness thereof, it belongs to Yah. If he was hungry, what would he ask us for? He would ask us for a living testimony. The life of the lechem, the bread of our hearts. If he was hungry, what would you feed him? You could only feed him the living truth of, of his power, his testimony. Come on, Yisrael, you hell, you can't feed him a biscuit. We got to read that in the text and understand what David said. If he was hungry, what would you feed him? The cattle upon a thousand hill belongs to him. The earth and the fullness thereof. It all belongs to you. So what would you feed him? When he commands us to love him with all. It's your great honor when we learn how to love him. We will love the nation. That's what he wants us to feed him. That's what makes his heart delight. He wants to be fed. He wants us to feed him that. That's what he feeds us, truth. So all becomes from Yah. If a man is poor, rejoice. If a man is rich, he will take and he will make sure the poor man, his standard is lifted up. These bastards don't give a damn about anyone's standards. They have no standard. They have no respect for life. They will kill each other. They're jealous because one has a million more than I. You're the second richest man. I'm the tenth. And they're jealous. They try to excel. One builds a thousand foot yacht. I know what I'm saying. And the other one builds one 1,200 feet just to make sure it's bigger than that one. 
One buys a $25 million jet plane. One buys a $50 million one. Same thing with poor men. One thinks he knows something. This one tries to prove to him he knows more. It's wrong. It's none of you. It's wicked. All of it comes from you. Life comes from you. He has power of life and death. That's why we don't have to fear death. You're sure has taken the sting, the fear. The power of death is sin. We're all going to die from the baby to the youngest. Everyone will die. Everyone will die. If he's born, he's going to die. And that's a fact. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I show us one simple thing that we can do to begin to enhance our mobility, our health, and our nephesh to grow? It said here from the loins of Shalomo, Shaul, Shalomo, Saul, and Solomon. He says here, listen to this in Proverbs. I'll tell you where it's at, 28, 25. He talks about a man that is Rahab. Don't turn that, just listen. He says, he that is of a proud nephesh. I know it will say soul, but he's talking about the substance of a man, a man that is of a proud nephesh. He stirs up strife. When you find one stirring up strife, they are full of pride. Where you find envy and strife, there is every kind of evil, wicked work in the minds of those uh, that conjure it up. So one that is proud, full of pride, uh, that is Rahab. Self-grandizing. Preoccupied with them. Those individuals always stir up strife, trouble. But he tells us this, but you that put your trust in Yah. He said, you shall be made fat. Doshin. Doshin. You shall have great riches. You shall be prosperous. You shall sense, you must trust Yah in order to get to this excellent. And above all that Doshin has one tremendous attribute above all. Doshin. Do, Doshin. You shall be made fat. It is that one is satisfied. You're satisfied with Yah. You're satisfied with whatever state you're in, you're satisfied. It is the true sign of one's riches. It is the true sign of one's excellent. It is the true sign of one's prosperous way in the way. One shall be made fat, doshin. You shall be satisfied with all that Yah has done. Because we know this, that all things come from Yah. Well, I have adversity, but it came from your father. He has put the fatness on your bone to make sure that you have the ability to oppose uh, the opposition and that you will rest in him. You will rest in Almighty Yah. You will domain. You will be quiet. You won't question him. You will be as one that is dumb. That is what Yah commands us to do. And you will just rest. You will rest in Torah. Because you have your trust. You have your baltak. You are confident in what the word says. You have great confidence. It is what you confer in truth. And it makes our countenance merry and fat. Make us rejoice with great abundance of the richness of a living Torah. We have a health because there is nothing. Uh, the, the word of Yah that even as we speak it to ourselves, uh, as he sent forth his word and healed them, uh, it will heal us. It will heal our ways. It will heal our attitudes. Uh, it will heal our spirits, Yisrael. That's what we need above all things. 
And we are pride for we will stir up all kinds of commotions and folly. Y'all gives us instructions in the way that we may prosper in a life that is so rich. This is a book that I very seldom read out of, but it's a very excellent book. The book of Tolbet. Chapter 4, verse 5. I want you to hear this. Tolbet says, My son, be mindful of Almighty Yahweh, our Abba, all your days. Always be mindful of him all your days. We're on a journey, are we not? And when one goes to take a trip, if he's going to journey 300 miles to Mars, one thing he's always aware of on that whole trip, that is that blue star ring that kicks on. Boop, 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 boop. Although when you're doing right, you're still aware. I don't care what trip I take. You drive every day, my friend. That is one thing you're always looking for and conscious of. Am I telling the truth? Absolutely. You're always cognizant of that. You drive, you're always cognizant of the police officer. And when you see a state patrol or whatever, it amplifies that. So when we began to grow in the knowledge of Torah, then we should be mindful of Yah about all the days. And he says, uh, he says to us, uh, and let not your will be set to sin. Don't let your passion be set to transgress Torah. Don't let your mind move you away from what is right to do. Or even transgress the mitzvah, the commandments. He tells us what to do. Don't, don't allow yourself to do, go against what he commands, Yisrael. He commands us, this is what the prophet says, uh, do upright all your life long. Uh, and follow not the ways of the unrighteous. Don't follow the ways uh, of those that you perceive are prospering. Uh, and they have their witty, invented ways. Uh, and they will steal and lie and cheat. Uh, and do every kind of damnable corrupting uh, for dollar. Like these bastards. 85 of them. They are man. You, listen, these are dogs. You have robbed the very nurturing of a poor man. He doesn't even mean nothing to you, just like this country. There are no jobs to be had. And they mock those uh, that, that have that little old card to sweat. When I see that, I turn my... It's not... I, no, that's your business. I don't even want to be that. Just, you know, that's your business, man. I don't look down on people for that. I turn my head. I want to make sure that you don't have to feel discomfort discomfortable with me. I make sure that I, I, I make sure I make sure that I make sure that because that's what this world has done to people like, and there are those that vast majority of them absolutely need it. And I will not do them like that. I don't care who they are. And there are those that are as poor as them will look at them like they're beasts. And I see them in every creed from the whitest of white to the darkest of darkest. They all use it. It's a fact. So do upright all your life. Listen. For if you deal truly. If you says all matters with a true heart. With honor and understanding. Beloved above all things I want you to prosper. And be in the excellent health of your, even as your mind, your nephew's pro prosper. This is how we prosper. This is how we get rich. We must get rich and fat. We must have the doshain, the fatness of Yah. He says, for if you deal truly, truly with honesty, everything you do, he says, you're doing shall prosperly, or you shall prosper you shall succeed, that shall be success to you and to them that live justly. For we, we live right. As the old folks would say, if you do right, this was the proverb. Listen to it. If you do right, quote, if you do right, 
good things to happen to you. Unquote. If you do it right, then there'll be nice things to happen to you. I've told us a story about this land here. The man who purchased this land, Mr. C is what I call him. You must understand in the 40s, 50s, and 60s that the Caucasian would not sell black men land, and when they did, the price was, was extremely high. That's just a fact. We don't want to deal and confront those issues, but it's a fact. And there was an elderly Caucasian woman live right here. She owned land that has been left to her by her parents. And he said, this is what she said. She told me. She says, I know if I do right by the black, the colored folks, then when I die, God is going to do right by me, unquote. That's what the woman said. I said, that's what he said, that's what she said. And so that she will not cause a great stir in this little wicked county. All this land on this side of the highway. He said she sold it to the people of the dark hue skin color. Because she didn't want the white folks raising hell at her. And the ones on the other side over here, she sold it to white folks. That's how she did it. If I do right by them people, I know that God is going to do right by me. But he told me that. I said, that's what? He said, yes, sir. And she sold this land, all of this land, to those of the diaspora. She owned thousands of acres. He said, when I bought this land, it was not a tree on this land. It was all used to farm. He said, it was not one tree on this land. And he purchased this piece of land in 1960. It was not a tree on this land. You understand? So the old proverb, if you do right, then there shall be a great reward. There shall be rewards. You do just by any man. Yah will do. I don't care if a man is a sinner or he is a child of Yah. If you do just, he commands us to do just by all men. You do just by men. I don't care who the man is. You do just by the man. You don't do evil or God say, Emma. You do right by the woman. You don't do them wrong, Yisrael. There's a price to pay and there's one. So if we just trust Yah and, and if we deal truly, our ways shall be prosperous. And we shall have success. We shall succeed in our ways if we just live justly the way Yah commands us to live. Sometimes we don't realize what we possess. And we look at others and think that their position in life is much greater than ours. Can I give us some assurance, just right, yeah? By the voice of Shirak, he says, even though you, Yah uses the word poor, he uses the word, it is expressed oni or dal, dal, D-A-L-O-O-N-E-E, -E, oni or dal. It is without strength. A poor man doesn't have the power to resist those that are in great authority, and those that are of great riches. He's without little substance. There's nothing like a poor man. The, the word only is one that just simply humble himself, doesn't fight. You find most of the street people, you find the vast majority, they really won't fight. They don't really mess with nobody. Eh? They really don't. And so sometimes we don't understand what has come from Yah. And even in whatever state we're in, we ought to be cheerful and rejoice in Yeshua HaMashiach. I give us a statement of proof. Shirak says, better off is a poor man who is well and he has a strong constitution. He has the constitution of the Torah, the mitzvah, he loves Yah. He said that a rich man who is severely afflicted in his body. It is better to be poor and your mind, your cognate, your conscience is strong. It's upon the things of Yah than to have all the money in the world and your body is severely, severely afflicted. He also says health and soundness are better than gold. You got your health is better than all the riches. You're strong in your body, your mind is better than gold. He said, and a robust body is better than 
countless riches. Have your body to be able to get up and walk. You ought to be able to. I, I don't care if you walk with the pain. You ought to rejoice. It's a damnable shame that we don't. We will complain. I, I, I want to show us something here tonight, Yisraya. Hallelujah. He says, there is no help better than a healthy body. And there is no gladness. There's nothing that supersedes above a heart that is filled with joy. What is the joy of his nation? See, if we get the joy of Yah in our heart, the joy of Yah, the joy of his strength, the joy of his truth, that's our strength. The joy of his name is our strength. It will make our heart healthy and fat and strong. There's nothing more sounder than that. All the money in the land can't buy that. There are those that have uh, more money than they will spend in their children. And they're not healthy, they're not happy. There's nothing more greater than a, above a joyful heart. He says, even if we die, death is better than a miserable life. Uh, and eternal rest better than chronic sickness. Uh, it's better to say you hear old folks and people that are chronic. I'll never forget my iman. My next to the oldest brother, his daughter, she was young. She was dying of leukemia. She was a young child, what, 13, 14. She had been in the bed for about three years. No friends. I asked her one day, do you have friends? She says, no. Do they come see you? She said, no. And when I didn't go see her, she would, I had to go every Shabbat. I would do the radio broadcast, and I would go by and see her, and I would spend time with her. The man that was married to the woman that my brother was married to one time, he would not allow my brother to come. He would not allow my mother to come. He would allow not any of them. And I was a young, ignorant preacher. Still am ignorant. But I would pour it out on that radio. And when I would go there, the man was somewhat afraid of me, just because of the preaching. He never said anything. I've seen he tr him treat her wrong, the wife now, but he never said anything to me. Always entreating me kindly. And so when I didn't go, she would call and she would be so sad. And I had to go every, almost every Shabbat. It was not almost every Shabbat we go. You couldn't spend 15 minutes as, you know, you knew you were going to spend a couple hours, minimum. And then you had to find the right time to, to, to get away from her. She said, I have no friends. She said, nobody comes to see me. I hear them playing outside. And I hear the robust noise. She was so bright for her age, contending with death. And she would call me uncle, and she would say, you know, I'll be so glad I'm ready to just lay everything down. I want to. Said, you don't know the pain. She's in great agony. But I remember one day Rafi and I, we planned it for a month or two to bring her to our home. She was so happy. And so when she got to the home, she became very ill. She was young like you all. She died. The only reason I didn't go to the hospital was she was dying. Because I didn't want to be in the midst of that hypocrisy. I didn't go. And I wasn't going to go. False people, everybody loving her now, were damn hypocrites. I didn't even go to the funeral because of them hypocrites. And so we got to the house about that. We, were going, we had a little, we were going to have cake and ice cream, just a little thing. She was just happy to go with us. She loved Rafi and I. And so when she got there, she became so sick after about 30 minutes. And she says, Uncle, please, just take me home. She wanted to die at home. And they took her to the hospital where she died. But even her body says, even... Yah, not one of his children will be lost. We don't receive his Yashak by this little Christian lie that we've been told. Say this, I born again. Child of the loud. No. He doesn't lose one. Not one hair of the head of man is lost. 
And so this verse said that chronic, chronic sickness is, and we are so chronically sick in our minds that we love death. We love sin more than we love young. This has a twofold, more than one application. We're so sick, our minds are so diseased, we've dressed our minds with unfaithfulness, we don't trust Yah, that we kill ourselves to sin, to every kind of wicked damn thing there is, and we perform it, and it's wrong, Yisrael. I want to make sure I finish on time. I want to, that there's something here that's important that I want to read. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's very important. I have quite a few verses here, Zachin Yarame, I would say, but I, I want to read, there was, there was a verse that was vitally important, and there's one that I want to close with. It says this here in the book of Shirak 29.11. I want us to hear this. He tells us our utsa, or to lay up your treasures according to the commandments of the Most High. That's how we lay up our utsa, our treasures, the riches of Yah, according to the commandments of Yah. And not only that, but he's talking about silver and gold, the riches. He says, according to the commandments of the Most High, he says that we lay it up according to Yah instruct us. What are our treasures? What are the treasures? I want to show you what Yahshua says. Lay up our treasures according to the commandments of Yah. And he said, it will profit. It will, Yael. It will cause you to prosper. You will gain. It will benefit you much. And you will avail. He says, it will, it will profit you more. You hear that? More than gold. If we lay up our utsa according to the commandments of Yah. Now this is what Shirat spoke. But Yahshua gives us a clear, precise identity of what this prophet says in Matitya, Matthew 6 and 19. He says, lay not up your treasures uh, upon the earth. He commanded us to lay up our treasures according to the mitzvah, the commandments of Yah. Yahshua said, lay not your treasures upon the earth. Why? Where moth and rust does corrupt and wherein thieves break through to steal. Uh, but he tells us to lay up our treasures uh, according to the commandments of Yah in the heavens, uh, that we mind the heavenly things, uh, that our mind is on the heavenly things. Uh, he said, our treasures in the heavens, uh, where neither moss nor rust nor corruption nor thieves do break through to steal. Uh, and he tells us the treasures. He says, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So what does your heart meditate on day and night? And what caused your mind to be given over unto certain pacifics? That's where your treasure is. And those treasures are not laid up according to the commands of Yah. If there is one thing that messes us up more than anything, and I'm going to close with this, it's this verse. I'm not going to tell you where it is. Take the concordance and look up the word that I will amplify. The Torah tells us to delight, hafetz, our will. That's the word hafetz, is to let your will delight, let the purpose of your heart. Delight your nefesh and comfort your lamb. You should delight yourself in the Torah. If we delight ourselves in the Torah in Yah, He will give us the treasures of our heart. He will give us the very desires of our heart. We don't do that. And so that is what comforts our heart. And he tells us when we do that, he said, remove this sorrow far from you. He says, because this yagun, this sorrow, it destroys many. We don't think that our sorrow destroys us. He says, remove it far from you, because this, this yagun, this sorrow, destroys many. And above all that, there is no profit in it. You can't profit by being sorrowful. We're sorrowful about everything. There is no profiting. There's no ya'al. You cannot prosper. You cannot 
proceed and progress being sorrowful. What's wrong with you? Well, I'm just, it's wrong. It's wrong. And the reason you're sorrowful is because you don't delight yourself in Yah. You don't delight yourself in Torah. That's one of the first things that Evangel Hartsfield taught me. He said, son, if you delight yourself in Torah, you understand what that means? I always play the ignorant role. I've never tried to show men what I know. But what I talk about, I know what I'm talking about. He says, son, I want to tell you something. When we delight ourselves in Torah, in Yah, it doesn't mean that those crazy desires, what he will do, he will put the pleasure, the desire in you. And what that desire is, uh, he will call that, uh, that, that tikva, that, 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 that thing that one desire, he, he is the one that put the desire there. Because he's the one and only one that can furnish it. And because we do not, we do not delight our nefesh to make our hearts fat, to make them strong. We allow sorrow to any end, enter in and it destroys us and there's no profiting in being sorrowful. What's wrong? Well, I just feel sorry for myself. Well then, stop feeling sorry for yourself then. Stop being sorrowful. It's going to destroy you. It destroys your health. It destroys your mind. There is no, uh, uh, no profiting uh, in being all dismayed uh, and all sorrowful. Uh. None, Yisrael. Yeah, so stop it. That's the first order of business. Stop being sorrowful. For what? It all comes from your poverty, sickness, adversity, trials. He's going to prove a nation of people. He intended for us to be a great blessing to all nations and all people. And the riches of his wisdom would flow that people will come from the four corners of the earth, from every region of the earth, to hear the wisdom of his people. Not just here, but to watch them, the interaction and their love. And we have learned the way of the wicked very well. We have learned the way of a whore well. And that's why we are in the predicament we're in. May the riches of Yah rest upon you all. Greetings to you all that have joined us. May the riches of Yah rest upon you all. May he bless you all. Rich. May he strengthen you all. May he cause his light to shine upon your face. And that you may prosper in all of his ways and his doings. In the blessed name of Yorkshire, no other name. Given yeah. unto man whereby we must be saved, but in that precious name, in your sure's name. Let us stand to our feet. Hallelujah. In all things we do, Barak, you are above for your excellence, for your kindness, your compassion toward us all. We pray for those that join us. Bless those that are in tremendous situations with the weather. Our Akhmikaya and family, and Zachin David, eight inches there in Baltimore, and shoveling. Uh, until 11 p.m. last night, call. Yeah, bless our Achim, our Chutz, Maria, Anna there, and also our Ak Frank, and uh, Chot Lucretia, and Chot Kim there, and her ish there in, that, in the Illinois region of Chicago, where it's cold. Yeah, we bless you. Bless the greenhouse tonight, our Ak Yosef, to make sure that it's warm, and all of the Achim look upon them all. Take out our zakhin shibri down the highway safely. Those that were not here, we pray for them. In your shoes, blessed name, strengthen us all to love each other and to appreciate you for all things in your shoes name. Hallelujah. 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 hallelujah.